Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we have a question from Albert Guru, KR3HAB. And uh, he is actually writing to talk about some symptoms he had and what he found to be the problem. And uh, I'll just go over a little of this. It's a fairly long uh, piece here. But before I do, I would like to pay a special thank you to Fred Patton, who is one of my patrons who helps support this channel. If you would like to become a patron, you, you may go to www.patreon.com slash ke0og and finding a way that works for you. Okay, let's take a look at this because this is a very good lesson learned. He uh, has um, a shack that's pretty well uh, shielded, and he calls it his um, uh, My Faraday Cage Enclosed Shack um, was transmitting inside the Faraday cage. Now, Faraday cage just has copper or wire around it and it's connected to ground. And in theory, any RF generated inside will not get out and any RF energy outside will not get in. Now, that's within limits. The Faraday cage attenuation is measured in dB. And let's suppose it's 50 dB, okay? Well, let's see. A one milliwatt transmitter is 30 dBm. No, one milliwatt is zero dBm. One watt, 30 dBm. 10 watts uh, would be 10 times that or 40 dBm. And 100 watts would be 50, you know, 100 watts times 10 would be 50 dBm. So if your signal transmitted outside that is uh, 100 watts, you're going to get one watt or one milliwatt worth inside the Faraday cage. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that one watt can be a fair amount of RF, and you'll hear it. You'll hear it. Like, uh, even when I transmit into my dummy load, I can hear it on my uh, 7300. Uh, 7, okay. So he uh, has a lesson learned that he wanted to share. He says he has an amplifier in Kenwood TS-480, nice rig, that work well together until one day the fuse of my Astron RS-4 ADC power supply, which powers unrelated equipment, blew. That's odd. Um, so I replaced the fuse. I noticed, however, that transmitting without the amp would go fine, and then after a few times the SWR would pop up and go higher and higher. It sounds like RFI in the shack. Okay, the transmitter was fine to the dummy load, and it perhaps, and it did not matter which antenna I was using. Uh, moisture in the outdoor manual antenna switch, perhaps. Things were strange. It touched to turn on LED was sending FT8 flashes. Uh, the SWR meter light went out on transmit. Oh, you know you've got RF in the shack then. A VHN transceiver was turning on and off. Ah, this sounds like the beginnings of a horror movie, doesn't it? Okay, so um, like that Wednesday series on uh, Netflix, I've been watching that. And we got to the end of the first season, and it's just delightful. <laughs> the whole thing is delightful. It's worth watching. It's a little weird, but, well, actually, it's a lot weird, but it's about the Adams family, so. Okay, so I thought to take a shortwave receiver and turn it on the transmitted frequency, and wow, my Faraday cage and closed shack was transmitting powerfully with me inside the field. You know, for short periods of time, it's not that bad. So I went around with the radio and found everywhere the coax was. There was lots of RF. Now, here's where he gets to the solution. And this could easily elude you if you were working on it. Then I spotted a corroded splice in the shack feed to the ground rod. Now, my ground wire also has a splice in it too. 
and it's under the house so it doesn't get wet but this one was getting wet so he bypassed it with an elevated splice and everything went back to normal so it was a grounding problem okay he's he thought he was grounded in his shack but he was not okay he was transmitting with a weak ground that was intermittently behaving as an open circuit now his question is really just sort of a wrap up to this thing should i buy a signal strength meter and uh, keep it in the shack and check to make sure nothing goes crazy actually all your equipment in there if anything goes strange you know you've got rf in the shack um, and that's as good a meter as any the problem with non-lab grade signal strength meters is that they are not measuring absolute values they're measuring relative values so if you go from one to two on the scale you've maybe doubled the rf or maybe you've gone up by two db who knows it's up to the manufacturer you can create very simple signal strength meters and they will give you a relative indication so you could create one and plug it into the shack power supply and put the meter up there where you can see it and if it starts to move around that's when you can start to work and find out where the problem is um, if you want to measure true signal strength in volts per meter and amps per meter okay it takes lab grade equipment that can be quite expensive so probably would cost you everything you've put into your ham shack so far so i would go with the relative signal strength meter you can get little ones from mfj and other places like that that will give you a relative idea of the signal strength now i know we'd all like to get accurate signal strength meters so we can stand around our antennas and see how powerful they are except that antennas radiate up so some people have gone so far as to put a good signal strength receiver on a drone and fly it in various loops around to plot the signal strength to see what their antenna is actually doing i could not control my drone well enough to do that so it would take somebody who has some way of predefining paths on a drone to do that but be that as it may i'm glad you found what was the problem i'm sure that was very frustrating the lesson learned for everybody is make sure your shack really is grounded okay now there are tools out there that you can use uh, to do that but uh, they almost have to be used by an electrician because they have so many caveats after them as to whether you're really measuring ground or you're measuring a loop and most people are actually measuring a loop so there you have it if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and click like and also share this with your friends and if you would like to help support this channel financially go to decastlercom support and pick a way that works for you and until we next meet 73.